wanted to touch on the impact of new technology on M&E and especially mobile technology. Mm -hmm. I know you mentioned how it's impacting health information technology. So I was wondering if you could just kind of talk about some of those big changes that are going on right now. Sure. So one of the big things that we've seen over the past almost decade, I think, is this movement towards doing a lot of mobile data collection, which I think more around normal M&E systems versus health information systems has made a big impact in terms of the speed and timeliness of getting data back, but also the quality of the data and information. We're now eliminating some of those levels of human error. Mobile surveys can actually let you put in a little, little test so that if someone, say, gives an age or something else that's not within a range that you find acceptable, it can give a little prompt to that data collector to say, oops, did you put in the wrong number, or the wrong year, mm. or the wrong age? If you're putting in a reproductive age woman, for example, she has to be between 15 and 49. And so if someone puts in five, and accidentally forgets the one, making sure that we have a way to catch that. It's been an, an interesting process because it does allow you to get the data faster and in a more accessible format. And then it's up oftentimes to the program staff to figure out how to visualize that data effectively. And that's where tools like dashboards and, yeah. and other ways of visualizing data and information so it's easily accessible and we can see what's happening in real time is really exciting, especially for uh, monitoring. When you're looking less at the evaluation right. surveys and more at real time monitoring as we have data coming back in from our programs. But it takes some work on the back end to go ahead and make sure that that data is being crunched from a database into those effective visualizations. Yeah. And that comes back to how do we make data accessible in meaningful formats. And that could mean an electronic dashboard. You've seen a lot of countries moving yeah. to the DHIS system, the DHIS2 now system for routine health information, which mm -hmm. has an electronic dashboard that's customizable and it's great. But also when you're thinking about a community level health worker or someone at a remote health facility, how are you making data accessible to them. And I think that's a big question that we all are trying to sort out with our in-country colleagues and partners is how we think about ways that might be non-electronic to make data accessible. How do you empower people with the skills to take tables or data or information, get those tables of data and information back to them to begin with? But how do you empower them with the skills to actually take that and chart and graph it themselves, which might mean using templates and things that are hand-drawn and not made by a computer. What does that conversation look like to figure out what's beneficial for them? Is it just a conversation, just trying to figure out what makes sense? So that conversation, I think, looks different depending on where you are and right. who's involved. So important, obviously, to involve a lot of the other stakeholders. I know when they were designing the, the C-Stock system, which is kind of a simple example, simple as an overstatement, but <laughs> an example from Malawi that was a logistics tracking system for community level health worker commodities. So how do you effectively resupply community level workers with the drugs that they need, the simple things they need to treat diarrhea, pneumonia, and other childhood illnesses. Mm -hmm. And when they were designing that system, which is all a mobile based platform, all of that's done via mobile, it's a really interesting tool. They had to think about not just what the community health workers needed, but also what data needed to get fed up into the higher level systems for decision making and budget budgeting and making policy choices. And so they had to engage those other uh, kind of senior level experts right. from the Ministry of Health and then also logistic systems experts. So it's a dialogue that happens across a lot of different groups in order to figure out what might be effective. Uh, we have a lot of programs at JSI working on routine health information systems mm -hmm. and thinking about how to strengthen those. And part of that is thinking about what indicators um, are, are collected systematically across countries that we can look at, what data streams are there where there's duplicate uh, kind of data collection efforts happening. So for example, in Tanzania, where we've been doing some work, they use two different reporting functions to go ahead and collect data on immunizations. And so one is mainly driven at going ahead and reporting back to the WHO, who mm -hmm. estimates or helps to estimate the, the coverage levels at the national level for different immunization indicators. And the second is their national Tanzanian reporting system, okay. so going into DHIS. So when you have multiple streams collecting the same data, we call them parallel, parallel systems, mm -hmm. uh, you have to raise the question of how can we make this more efficient? So not just about how do we go ahead and think about what data we're collecting and is it meaningful, but how are we making sure we're collecting that meaningful data in the most efficient way that gets at the needs of the people we're trying to serve. But as uh, reporting burden increases for health facility workers mm -hmm. and they spend more and more time collecting data that they send up the system, thinking about how that's creating a trade-off for them that they may not be actually doing some of the activities that really benefit them. I think it's a, a big balance that we have to think about, that every time you create a new data collection form mm -hmm. or you introduce a new way of collecting data and information, you're adding something else to someone's job, someone who's already usually overstretched and has a lot on their plate. Yeah. And so how do we think about what's meaningful to 
them and making sure that we're considerate about making sure that data comes back to them and they feel like they can use it for problem solving and targeting outreach services and thinking about how to better allocate their own kind of limited resources, financial, human, et cetera.